Welcome to another MBS Highway Live Monthly Webinar. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today's special guest is very special to me. She holds a special place in my heart. She has been this thriving woman in the mortgage industry. I've looked up to her, and I've learned so much from her throughout the years. She's the CEO and founder of The Defining Difference, a success-based coaching and training company devoted to helping people master the power of intentional choice and a defining difference in their own life. She's been the top 100 most influential mortgage executives in America by Mortgage Executive Magazine for five years in a row. And for more than a decade, she's been top 100 mortgage loan originators in the U.S., by Mortgage Originator Magazine. And now she's dedicated her life to empowering the growth of others. Cindy's goal is to help her clients get out of, get out and make a life more powerful by making intentional choices to propel their income and achieve peak performance. She's also featured in a new documentary, which I need to check out, The Evolution of Success. This documentary charts the very personal journeys of some of the most successful people in the world. This film helps you redefine success and gives you the tools to reach new levels of joy, fulfillment, and achievement in every area of your life. Join me in welcoming Cindy Ertman. Thank you, Megan. It is always so much fun to be here with you. And you know, I'm probably the biggest MBS Highway and very Habib fan on the planet. So it's just, I always get super excited when I'm invited to be on to be a special guest for your audience. So thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. We are excited to learn all about goal setting today, Cindy. Well, you know, it's a, it's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And obviously, you know, as you come into a new year, you know, people like so into New Year's resolutions, that's never really been my thing. I'm all about intention setting and really planning goals. But you know, being a successful originator and, you know, ultimately building my own production to just over 200 million, I, I have, you know, you have to have a plan. At the end of the day, you can't scale your business without a plan. And I think particularly now coming off last year, last year was tough. I mean, one of the toughest years that I've seen probably in our industry, and we've had many years as an originator with higher interest rates than last year, but I think it was coming off the tail 2020 and 2021 and the uncertainty of where we were in a very compressed market, it was, um, I think the wheels fell off, you know, a lot of people's mindset. And so it's a matter of how do we go into this year now with a fresh start for real and just let that go, which is not that easy because we're still in a somewhat compressed market, but we've got to put blinders on now. It's time to get back to practices that can really make a difference because I firmly believe that 2023 will be a great year. <laughs> so I'm ready to just jump in. You guys ready? Jump in. Give us the good. Right. Well, I've got a few notes. So I'm going to refer to a couple of things because there's a few things that I want to share with you before we really get started on the plan. And I'd love to have you. We've got a chat going. I, you know, I love participation. So hopefully at the end of this, we'll be able to open it up for some, you know, some questions along the way. So if you have questions, put them into the chat. I know, Megan, you're going to monitor that at the end, but I love interaction. That's what this is for. You know, we show up to, to be able to help and support you with the challenges that you're having. And I love, love, love live Q&A. So please bring it on. But first of all, just thanks again for the opportunity to be with you all. Um, I have told Megan that if uh, we're so lucky to get your email addresses, I will send you a copy of this plan because I really want you committed by the end of this that you actually will just be dedicated to complete the plan. You can do it within 60 to 90 minutes. And I fully believe that to be able to execute a bright future for the year ahead, we've got to do it with a very simple plan because we've got to have intention around how we're going to create our goals and bring them to fruition. So for starters, one of the things I love is when we look at statistical data, there is a lot of data around the science behind creating a goal plan. It's not just, oh, it's a great thing to do. Of course it is. But the reality is Harvard did a study many years ago on goal planning. And the results were, as you can imagine, you know, 83% of the population have no goals whatsoever. And I, you think about that. To me, it's astounding, you know, but maybe that's because so many people feel stuck, but they've not put any intention around their business. People feel like their life is their life 
and they have no ability to make change, but we can all make change and rewrite our own stories by making new choices tomorrow than we made today. And sometimes those choices have to be simple, right? But the beauty is that 14% of the universe does have goals in their head. So they've thought about what they want to achieve. They're carrying around the goals, but where, you know, the rubber really, you know, meets the road and where the magic really gets created is for those 3% that actually create a goal plan. And it's not just creating the plan, but the other part of this is I want you to keep in mind that everything we do, you think about the relationships you create in your mortgage business, right? We really are in the relationship business. Relationships are all about energy. It's the energy that we bring to our partnerships. It's their trust and faith in us. It's gaining their acceptance to work with us. But the reality is our goal is around energy. And so we need to have an accountability partner. I mean, I think the reason people hire coaching, obviously, is we don't stay on track unless we have someone helping hold us accountable. I've had a coach for the last 40 years of my life. And it's, it's I mean, I had to laugh because my coach yesterday told me the same thing that I told my clients earlier that day, because I need the reminder too, right? I mean, we all do. So I want you to think about, you want to be that 3% because that 3% earned more than 10 times the rest of the people that did not have a written goal plan. Statistically proven that their income level and their success level was 10 times those they carried the goals around in their head and hadn't transferred them onto paper that they could actually track. Because it really is about tracking the goals that we create and putting energy around it. And the beauty of having an accountability partner, it can be somebody in your office, a fellow loan officer, a best friend, but you want to talk to your goals out loud. You want to speak them into the universe because there's something very powerful about the energy that that creates. And whether you believe in the law of attraction or not is irrelevant. I believe in it wholeheartedly because I have so many hundreds of experiences where things have come to me, but it starts an energetic exchange. So I want you to really think about that. Getting some accountability is extremely helpful in terms of bringing your goals to fruition. A couple of other stats I think are key is that um, those that have encouragement to achieve their goals because it's, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when we get really clear on our goals, it's actually intimidating to other people. Growth can intimidate the people around you because many people around you want you to stay status quo. And I, as I began to grow my own career and move from that 10 million to 20 million to 30 million and then 50 million and then leapt to 100 million, I never had a goal of 200 million, but it was kind of a cool thing to hit when we finally did because we had created the systems and the processes along the way. And it was incremental growth. You don't go from doing 20 million a year to 200 million. You do incremental growth and you create the systems and the processes that we need to scale our business. You learn how to hire the right team members. You know, this has been a tough season because many people lost their team last year. Um, and frequently they had no say because revenues were so down. But the reality is we've got to build it back again. We've got an opportunity of what Barry suggests is going to happen in the next few months, potentially, with some lowered rates, we've already started to see that occur. Um, there could be some really great things ahead. And the key now is to start to plant those seeds in a really meaningful way. We've got to get in front of your clients again. Every kind of got comfortable behind the screen, playing it safe last year. But I'm honestly, I was on the freeway the other day and there's this huge sign off the 10 freeway in Los Angeles and it said fearless. And I'm like, this year, you got to play fearless. You got to just leave fear on the side of the road and say it doesn't serve you. Playing small serves no one. So I'm going to jump into the actual goal plan here. And I want, again, as we go through this, as questions come up, I want to make sure that you put them into the chat because I want to make sure that, you know, we've got, we've captured any of the concerns you might have. So again, some of this is the reiteration on this first page of the stats around goal planning. But I'm so passionate about it. I get excited. I don't look at goal planning as a chore. I never have. I did goal planning last weekend. I carve out 90 minutes. I do a meditation first. I never do it at the office. I try to get into, in a perfect world, I'll go to a hotel. Um, I was actually at a spa. So I took a few days off between the holidays because you want to get yourself into more of an expansive mindset. We want to challenge you to think bigger than you have thought in the past. And, you know, one thing that I was trained in 2009 by Jack Canfield, who was, wrote all the chicken soup for the soul books. And one of the things that Jack 
um, just drills into your head is that if you're given an idea, you are also given the ability to bring that to fruition. And we always think we have to know how. So a lot of people won't write down a very extensive goal because they don't know how they're going to get there. But you don't know how, always have to know the how. When I launched my coaching and training company 10 years ago, believe me, I didn't have all the hows. I had to learn as I went, but I kept doing the same practices I did in my mortgage business. I took steps every single day to reach people, to build relationship, to continue to build systems and processes. And it's no different than what I'm going to show you today. So first we're going to start out, and this is something I highly encourage you if you've been on these calls before with me. Um, you've seen this worksheet. It'll be in the goal plan that we send to you. You should be doing your mortgage satisfaction assessment every 90 days because we want to grow, right? We want to be able to bring some of our goals to fruition. We want to be able to reassess where we need to spend our time, energy, and attention. So I want you to think about, and while we're going through this, you may just want to jot this down on a piece of paper as we go. I'd love to have you put your lowest couple of scores in the chat as we go through this because it's interesting to see where people really feel stuck. And I can assure you, when I was doing these assessments in 2020 and 2021, they were very different because production levels were at an all-time high. So people were not so worried about their personal production levels. Today, that's probably one of the number one things people are concerned about as originators in America today. So I want you to score yourself from zero to 10, with 10 being you are totally satisfied and zero being not satisfied at all with the number of referral partners that you have in your court. Now, you may have been really happy with those numbers a few years ago, but the reality is we all know that with real estate sales being significantly compressed this last year, a lot of your top realtor partners, for those of you that have been doing this for a while, you know darn well their numbers have been down as well. And so what do we have to do? We have to cast a wider net with great intention. Many of you got licensed in multiple states. I think it's phenomenal, but then you got to have a plan for how you're going to market those states, right? But just rank yourself truthfully on these key areas. Are you satisfied with the number of referral partners? Most people right now are going to score themselves low. Just be honest. You know, I believe that growth happens by we've got to drop the kimono and tell the truth. And that's when we get real. That's why I love getting people in small groups where people feel safe to share the real truth and they find out they're really not alone in their thought process. So number two, personal production levels. I want you to rank yourself. Are you happy with your personal production levels? I'm sure the majority of you would say no. There are certain people, I've had clients that are up 20% in 2022. They were extremely intentional about their practices. I'm gonna be leading a training with Denise Donahue in a couple of weeks. Denise did six, served 600 families last year. One of my other clients, Tom Couture in Lubbock, Texas, served over 500 families in 2022. There are still some amazing success stories because those people were focused on the right activities each and every day, and they put blinders on to what was going on in the market. So your compelling client experience, you all have an experience. It may not be compelling. Maybe you haven't created any systems or processes around your client experience, but I would encourage you to really think about it. So do you have a compelling client experience? Have you built out a process? What happens when the lead comes in? Do you have a system that you've mapped out? What happens next? If not, I encourage you to take an hour of your time one day and just sit down and map it out. What happens for that when the lead comes in? How do you stay in contact with that lead? Build out the system and the process. I used to do this initially just on an Excel spreadsheet. It was very easy and then we could fill in the gaps and then we would assign team members to each of those tasks as we would build it out. But anyway, think about your compelling client experience. Do you have one or do you maybe need to up-level a game so that you know you can you know, expand your net to bigger reach and really create a wow experience for your clients? So maybe there's two or three integrations that you can create as part of your goal plan. Your marketing execution. Look, 2020, 2021, no one need to market their business. We know that. But the reality is now you do. And I will also tell you, and it's, it's not a big surprise to any of you watching, but the reality is, Many of the reasons that my clients were up last year had to do with social media. They decided to get over their fear of doing video and they educated people through video content consistently on social. And they cast some very wide nets 
You know, my client Sue Meitner has cast a very wide net through social and started getting referrals from other states into her state of Pennsylvania, because at the end of the day, not everybody was licensed in other states. So your reach can have very big implications. And certainly it creates your expertise and really, you know, puts shines a very bright light on the knowledge that you do have to educate others. So I want you to think about your marketing execution. Are you, do you have a plan in place? It's not hard to put together a marketing plan. In fact, it's really very simple and we make this way too hard. But the reality, and maybe Megan someday will do a marketing training because I love to do the marketing plan training to educate people as to how to build a marketing plan. It's very simple, but I couldn't do what I did as an originator running a branch in a region here in Southern California if I didn't have a plan. So think about, for me, I sent an email to my past client database on the first of every month. It was in my calendar I used MBS's content, MBS Highway's content as what I would share with clients to give them a market update on a monthly basis. My assistant kept me accountable to that email. The number one thing, if you do not have a database where you can actually write an email to your past client data, all of your past clients, I really recommend that you figure out what you can utilize to do that. Either learn the one that you have in house Find one on the open market. I've got lots of suggestions for that. But the reality is database marketing is probably, it got drilled into me 35 years ago at the beginning of my career. And it was the one thing that I never faltered from, from day one. And for those of you that are just starting out, don't like you've got friends and family, right? I mean, use who you have. You probably have, go to your phone. Someone said yesterday, look at the network in your phone. Look at the contacts you have. You can build a database when you're first starting out with friends and family and build from there. I had a past client database, all my closed loans. I had a realtor database. I marketed to 100 realtors. I didn't work with 100, but I marketed to 100 twice a month on the 1st and the 15th. And I also, you know, I sent hard mail postcards every quarter. I did four lunch and learns a year minimum. Sometimes I did 12, but I did four. Those were all in the calendar at the beginning of the year and we executed to the plan. So think about what you could do this year. Where do you need to up the game? Maybe you're not doing social media. You're not doing video. So think about how, and I'll give you some suggestions a little bit later for some of the things you could probably do to elevate the game. Your time, energy, and productivity. How productive are you? Rank yourself from zero to 10. Are you busy? Most originators are very busy, but do you go home at the day? Do you go home at the end of the day and go, my hour of power that I was focused on building and growing my business, that I concentrated a full hour for income generating activities? I feel so proud of myself that I did that. Or do you go home going, I was busy all day and I didn't call any new people? I didn't call my past clients. I didn't call my realtor partners. So we need to get intentional. If you're going to drive production this year, I promise you, I have been I have been productive in so many high interest rate markets because I outperformed my competition. I wanted it better. You know, I wanted it more than the next guy. And I didn't want to be good. I wanted to be great. And I became committed to be the best mortgage originator in America. And I didn't make it to number one, but I did make it into the top 100 for over a decade. And I was proud of that. My big thing is I wanted to serve a lot of families. I never did mortgage for the money. I did it for the opportunity to help and serve people. And I changed a lot of people's lives. And I want you committed this year to change more lives. What you do for a living, what your teams do, changes lives in America. Real estate is the number one wealth building asset in America. And you have the ability to help people understand how important that is. So look at your time, energy, and productivity. And then rank yourself on your team. Now, I know many of you are like, I don't have a team anymore. And maybe you don't. Maybe you went from a team of four to a team of one, right? But at the end of the day, the goal is to rebuild and to rebuild a team because ultimately we need a team to scale our business. So now we've got to focus on not the past, right? I always go, the past is when you look at the rear view mirror. What I want you to do starting right now for 2023 is I want you to look at the road ahead. Stop looking back at the sad year that 2022 was, and it was painful for a lot of people. I'm a mortgage coach. Believe me, I spend my day talking to people all day. I want you to look ahead. You know, it's like a visualization. If you shut your eyes and go, okay, I'm not going to look in that rear view mirror anymore. That did not serve me. Now I'm going to look at the road ahead and I'm going to recreate my future. And I'm going to recreate the most successful future I have the capacity to reach in 2023. 
So if you don't have a high impact team, I want you to work towards getting one. And at the end of the day, if you have one team member, two team members, five team members, are they operating as a high impact team? Meaning, are you, are you creating a culture within a company? Are you a great leader? Have you kept your energy high to be able to keep the energy of your team high? Because it was tough last year. And now we still have so many people working virtually that'll probably never come back to the office. How do you keep them all motivated and inspired and working in the right direction? It takes practices and planning to do that. It takes live Zoom meetings with your team that have to be on camera. You've got to have ways to keep them engaged. I have many clients doing a great job at that. So rank yourself on, you know, how are you managing your team? Good self-care. I mean, even with the year being slower last year, it's amazing how many people did not take care of themselves. And honestly, health to me is number one. And if you are not taking good care of yourself, your number one goal this need, year needs to be you. Like, and not tomorrow, I mean, right now. You know, I mean, you've got to make not just New Year's resolutions, but I mean, serious choices. Are you exercising? Do you have a morning practice? What time do you go to bed at night? Are you drinking too much alcohol? You know, all the things you hear day in and day out. One of mine that sounds silly because it sounds like it should be simple, but it's a struggle for me is drinking enough water. So I have my assistant like handing me my, you know, water glass all day long because it's something that I need to get better hydrated for my health. I set my alarm again. I didn't do it during the holidays for going to bed at 1030 because I'm a night owl and I do a lot of my inspirational things at late at night. So I reset my alarm and I'm back in bed while I go upstairs at 1030 just so I can be in bed by 11. And that's my non-negotiable for myself. I have morning rituals. I The reason I go to bed earlier now is because I will not miss it. If I'm going to pour into people and help people grow, I've got to be my best self when I wake up in the morning. I've got to be rested. I've got to be strong. I've got to be powerful. I've got to help people see their greatest strengths so that they can grow and build in any market. So take care of yourself. Rank yourself on a, it's from zero to 10. Are you taking great good care of yourself right now? Or do you need to make intentional choices starting today to make better choices for your health? Without it, we have nothing. There's so much stress in this business. I can't even tell you. So I'm encouraging you to focus on that first and foremost. And work-life balance. I just did a video on social around this because a lot of people are going, oh, it's a bunch of crock. And, you know, I used to struggle with, is that even a real thing? But at the end of the day, you know, I was running a branch and a region and a top national originator. And I have three amazing now grown children. And so I had many non-negotiables for my life. And, you know, that is how I created the best version of work-life balance for me. We went on two-week vacations every summer. That was a non-negotiable. It was not perfect. I lost business. I had another loan officer cover my desk while I was gone. It wasn't perfect, but it was what I wanted to deliver to my children. I didn't want to miss their sporting events. It was a non-negotiable. I had dinner with them every night, Monday through Friday, non-negotiable. So those were the non-negotiables that I set so I could create work-life balance. And I had to write checks. I couldn't do it all. I had to write checks to get help. But I found that if I wrote checks to get help with the things that I needed support around, I could focus on work when I was at work and it allowed me to focus more on family when I was at home. So there's a lot of things that you actually can do to create better balance in your life by being more focused on your daily activities. One of the things... Megan, I'm always amazed with and having so many conversations lately is how many people I ask their numbers, right? For the last two years, like what was your volume that you funded? What's your unit account? How many families did you serve? And it's amazing to me how many people have no idea. And I'm going to encourage you right now to start with January, 2023 to track your numbers. It's a really important thing to know. Now, I know a lot of people did not want to track their numbers last year because it was such an off year. Many people were off as much as 70%. It was rough. But the reality is starting right now for the month of January, I want you to be intentional about tracking your numbers. We just did it on an Excel spreadsheet, but it's very simple to do. But I want you to know at the end of every month, what did you actually fund? How many families did you serve? And I want to get you intentional about where you want to go. So when you get this exercise, I want you to really complete this real time. You know, what kind of production did you do last year? How many families did you serve? And what do you want to do this year? You know, what are you committed to? 
because it's going to help you realize what activities you're going to have to focus on to actually bring that goal to fruition. And if you have team members, I think it's a great thing to put your team members, their title and their role. And maybe if you don't have certain team members that you know you need to add to the team, you add proposed, you know, to be determined team members. Because right now we've got a lot of people looking at, okay, I'm going to grow without question. I'm going to do what it takes to do it. And I'm going to need additional support. And I'm a huge, huge fan of growing your business to require the support that it, that it deserves. And I want you to think right now, being super honest with yourself. And I, first of all, I'm going to back up just a minute. I'd love to have you put in the chat, really, like, what was your lowest score? I think it's a really important thing to look at because, you know, and you might have had, a, you know, a two on lots of them right now because the shift in the market, but put in a couple, if you would, maybe about what are your lowest scores? And that's where I'd encourage you to focus on. And don't be shy because everybody's got lowest scores, right? Some of you are new to this business. Some of you have been in it in excess of 30 years. So there's, you know, MBS Highway has an incredible, you know, everybody needs it, right? It's like kind of the number one tool that I recommend for sure. But now I want you to look at the gaps in your business. Think about where do you see the biggest gaps? You know, maybe you know that you're not being proactive. You're not reaching out to referral partners at all. You don't know. You don't call past clients. You don't have a script for that. You don't know what to say. You've been hiding behind your screen. You have not been proactive. A lot of people got leveled by fear. Their confidence got really rattled with this elevating interest rate market. I had a client call me a few months ago, super successful client, over 150 million a year in production, saying that I've lost the, I don't even want to call my realtors, but I believe they've lost confidence in me. Now he doesn't control the rate environment. You know, none of us do. But at the end of the day, he felt the realtors and his clients had lost confidence in him with the rising interest rate market. They didn't really believe him. And I get it. Like that was a very real fear for him. And I'm sure it was very real for many of you. So think about where the gaps are in your business. Um, one of my recent clients, one of their biggest gaps, he's a big producer as well in Texas, but one of their biggest gaps is they were getting all these great leads, but once the lead would come in the door, you know, would go into their database, would go into Jungle, but then there's there was no follow-up. There was no system for the follow-up. There was nobody that had been assigned that task to follow up on that lead. They had built no process or system around it. So that was their biggest gap was lead follow-up. Of course, we didn't have as many leads last year, so it wasn't as big of a problem. It was a much bigger problem in 2020 and 2021. But I'm encouraging people to get systems around lead follow-up because I do believe that our next interest rate reduction is going to create much more of maybe not a tsunami, but it's going to create I think a pretty um, interesting market again for people that now have wanted to get into real estate for the last many months. So I want you to really think about three of the gaps that you have in your business. Maybe it really is social media. Maybe you're not doing any videos. Maybe you're not out in the world expanding your reach. So maybe that's really one of the gaps that you're going to commit to this year. But the goal of a goal plan is to really get intentional about your business and your life. And look, I want you to think about it differently if this is a chore. This is your life we're talking about. Like the only one that can change it is you. And it starts with this, right? It's mindset. Mindset is the single biggest challenge for everyone on the planet. It's the universal experience. It's easy to buy into fear. And particularly in the market that we've had, there's fear all around us if we buy into it. It's why I stopped listening to news. And believe me, it finds me. Important news finds me. But I seek the news that I want to have. I seek MBS Highway to find out what's going on, you know, in the market. Seek, you'll, you'll find any news that you need to have. So these are the areas that we're going to focus on with your goal plan. We're going to focus on five key areas. We're going to look at your career and your work. We're going to look at your health and your wellness. We're going to look at your family and your relationships. We're going to look at your personal and business growth. Where do you want to grow as a person? You know, when's the last time I one of my clients this morning, I was on the phone with him at 7:30, and he goes, You know, you you asked me if I like to read, and I said no. And he goes, But I have all these books I want to read. I go, Well, you have a long commute every morning. Why don't you just listen on Audible? He goes, Like, I already knew I should do that, but now I actually have started doing it. So he's got five books and he's committed, he's already started and he's listening to them every morning. 
That's someone making a new and intentional choice, right? To educate himself each and every day. So we came up with this book list this morning on our call, what he's going to do to educate himself to start the new year. And your personal finances. I don't believe we talk enough about personal finances. You know, it's interesting on my high level coaching, my mortgage mastermind elite group is we have a conversation today. One of the clients, he goes, I'm not stressed because I saved a lot of money in 2020 and 2021. But a lot of people made a lot of money in 2020 and 2021 and did not save it because we believe that the gravy train is always going to be there. Look, I mean, what I lived through running a branch in a region with my partner in 2007, 8, and 9 was pretty big, as many of you on this call did too. That was, to me, much rougher than what we've seen in this last year. It was a rough, rough, rough season, and many of my own personal friends lost their homes and their cars. It was really a tough season. So I want you to think about your personal finances as we go through this plan. Think about what, how you could do a better job going into this year to pay yourself first. What, what kind of debt are you carrying that maybe, you know, everybody's dirty little secret is if they have debt, no one wants to talk about it, but you need to talk about it and you need to create a plan. I, you know, I went through a divorce after my long-term marriage ended and the reality is it was a rough season emotionally for sure. But at the end of the day, I realized that suddenly like I'm in charge of my financial future and I made some very big decisions that I wanted to ignore. I wanted to put my own head in the sand, but I realized I had to make some decisions. I had a $100,000 um, second tree trustee to my home and I wanted to get that paid off and I put together a plan. And at the end of that year, it was a silent little victory when I went like this in the mirror and went, that's so cool. I, you know, I reached my goal of paying that debt off with a very intentional plan as to how much business I had to create to get that debt off my shoulders. And I was successful. So I want you to get more intentional this year about your personal finances. So let's look at your career and your work goals. The way this financial plan actually works is for each of these five areas of your life and your business, you're going to create three goals. So let's talk about business for a minute. You're going to create three business goals or career goals. And for each of those goals, you need to have a minimum of three action steps for how you're going to get there. And the key to this, when I review goal plans for my clients, one of the biggest things I see, and it does frustrate the heck out of me, I must admit, is they're very generic. And what I see a lot of clients do, I just reviewed one yesterday and it said, I want to fund $4 million a month. Okay, and it's not that that's a bad goal. That's a great goal, right? That's a phenomenal goal. But the reality is the action steps to get there were very lax, meaning I want to meet, you know, five new partners. Okay, but the, the reality is the action steps are the how you're going to do that, right? They're the very specifics. What are you willing to commit to? Because if you're doing a million a month right now and you're trying to get to four, it means that you've got to talk to a lot more people, you know? So I actually made him commit to 20 realtor meetings between now and the end of the month, you know, to get live and in person or at least on Zoom. I'm starting to really encourage people to do their meetings on Zoom and not over the phone, really get more face-to-face, -face, get more interaction, drive to deeper relationships. But I want you to think a little broader and I'd love to have you put into the chat you know, what would be one career and work goal? If you're going to stretch yourself a little bit this year and don't let fear get in the way because that makes us play small. Like, what do you want to achieve? What's your number one goal for the next 90 days? What do you want to create in the next 90 days that would make you feel like you've had a successful, great first quarter of the year? What would that be? So I'd love to have you put a goal into the chat with what's one career and work goal you want to achieve. And then as when you get this plan, I really want you to take the time to map out at least an hour and fill in those action steps. Because, and if you have any questions around this, again, when we get into chat, please ask them in the chat. Megan's monitoring because I want to make sure that I can address any challenges that you may have, or maybe any fear that's coming up for maybe stretching yourself a little, a little further than you're comfortable with. But that's how we grow. And one thing I know for sure, because I have done so many scary things in my life, you know, I really have. And what I started to realize is every time I conquered a fear, it made me realize I could. 
So what happens when we conquer that fear? It makes us want to strive for the next level. And pretty soon you get to a place where that glass ceiling is no longer there. And you don't get the stories in your head that you can't do something. You know you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. And I believe it to be true with everything in my being because I've lived it personally. Look, I, I've talked to one of my greatest fears for many years, and my close friends know this only too well, but I had a massive fear of public speaking. But I needed to be able to speak publicly and be on stages to share the message that I wanted to share. You know, and it was a really important thing for me. And I continued to take steps and take steps. And I hired speaking coaches and I went to trainings and I went to therapy. I did anything and everything. I invested in myself to get past that fear because I wanted to be able to get up in front of 300 realtors at a sales meeting and present to them. I actually was an in-house lender for 13 years during those days. And I had to present every single week and I had to get over that fear and somewhere along the way, I realized that sharing your message, which is why a lot of you are uncomfortable with video, is it's not about me. You know, it wasn't about how I looked or how I sounded. It was about the message that I was sharing. So if you're uncomfortable with video, realize it's not about you. It's about the message that you're sharing. You're using video to educate, you know, people around you, to give them a tool to prepare for home ownership. So I got over my fear of public speaking by continuing to do it and lean into the fear, by getting clear that I was in service to others, not myself. And one day I woke up and I got on the stage in front of 2000 people and I had no fear and I've never had it since. But that was a matter of continuing to take that step to break through that fear. And that took a lot of determination. But I'm here to tell you that once you break through that fear that's holding you back, there's no stopping what you're capable of in this business. The income is tremendous. The opportunity to help people and serve people is huge. So I really want you to see it. So think about how can you stretch yourself this year with three goals? I like short-term goals, y'all, because you know long-term goals are great, but what happens? We create an, a five-year plan and the market changes and the whole plan goes out the window. 90 days for me was very attainable. When I first created this plan, I created it for me, Cindy Ertman. I created it for myself because I wanted a plan. I still do my own plan myself every 90 days and I look forward to it. It's actually fun because I know if I write down my goals, I've got five people I share them with consistently. They will help me stay accountable. My coach helps me stay accountable to my goals and I'll actually get them executed. And the key is you have to go back and look at your plan at least weekly. Because you'll look at it and go, oh, I didn't hire my physical fitness trainer. That was on my goal plan two years ago. I gained weight during COVID, like many of us, and I wasn't happy with the result. And I don't like working out. And I know myself. If I don't have a plan, I, if I don't have someone holding me accountable, I will not work out. So for my health and fitness goal two years ago, it's hire a coach. I had to write the check to get support to work out. But I'm here to tell you, and I'm very proud being someone that does not like to work out, that I'm still in contract with her two years later, and I still work out with a personal trainer two times a week. So now my goal is to take that up a notch. But right now, I've still been committed to that goal. I showed up for one session, and I'm still there two years later. But I had to write it on a plan. I had to have accountability to execute and to hire a coach to keep me on track. So think about right now for your own health and fitness. Look, health is everything. Do you need to change your diet? I've heard from a lot of clients, they've got to cut back their drinking. You know, people got very sedentary during COVID. I think this last year was very hard on a lot of people, um, but it doesn't service, you know, in large quantities, clearly. I cut my own wine consumption back significantly. You know, I'm cutting, I'm going to bed earlier. I'm going to work out more efficiently. You know, I've added yoga into my routine weekly. So where do you want to move the needle? You know, what does your diet look like? I allowed myself total, I'm a cook, like I love to cook. So I cooked for kids and friends and all that over the holidays and it was a blast. But I'll tell you, I'm over it right, right now. I'm going back to my clean eating diet plan. But I'm really intentional about my life and my business. So get intentional about your health first and foremost. What do you want to create? Family and relationships. I want you to think about this very seriously. Your family and your relationships where do you need to focus your time and attention? You know, are you present with your children? 
You know, are you giving your spouse or your partner the time and attention that they deserve? Do you have someone in your branch that maybe needs to be addressed? Do you have a team member that's not pulling their weight? And if you do, look, I say coach them up or coach them out. We are not in a market that we can carry dead weight on any level. If you have team members that are not performing and not delivering and not driving to results, you need to help them along their way because there are a million people out there looking for great jobs in the mortgage space. We cannot handle B players right now. We've got to have A players on our team and we've got to show up, coach them up or coach them out and you'll be doing them a favor. But your relationships with these people, your business relationships, do you have anyone in your life that is an energy suck that just completely depletes you? I do a great exercise once a year where I write down everybody in my sphere, business and personal, and I put a plus and a minus next to their names, a plus if they fuel me, a minus if they deplete me. And I'll tell you, honestly, it's why I'm divorced today. There was a minus next to my ex-husband's name. <laughs> like, seriously, I fired my own processor. You know, as a top originator, she was amazing. She was the best processor I ever had in my life. But I had to let her go because she was an energy drainer to the people in my branch. One of my coaching clients just had to do this to someone that had become a friend of hers. It's very hard. We cannot allow energy vampires in our life. We cannot lead from a place of strength and run a high impact team if we have energy vampires. You know, I had two of my clients at the retreat live and in person a few months ago that that really were, well, were humble and shared that they did not have relationships with their fathers. They had not talked to their father in over 10 years. And both of them reached out to their father and said, it's time to heal that wound while their fathers were still alive. You know, so maybe there's a relationship, maybe someone you need to forgive. So I want you to look at your family and your relationships. One of my clients, in fact, I think he's on this call. One of his assignments at the beginning of last year was he had never taken his wife on vacation, just the two of them without kids. And I made him book a three-day trip. I helped him plan it. You know, people don't think you do that in a coaching session. That's exactly what we did. And when he got back from that vacation, their whole relationship was renewed, completely revamped their marriage. Like they fell in love again. What a great gift, you know, for your partner. And it was one of the greatest things. Like he had a whole different year experience last year because he committed to pour into his wife for three days. So a lot of times we need to look at, you know, where do we need to really support our family and our relationships in a more meaningful way? Your personal growth, be done here in just a minute, but look at your personal growth. Where do you want to grow personally? You know, maybe if you don't, I assume you have MBS Highway if you're on this call, but I'll tell you, that is a number one, right? I mean, that is an area we have to grow. And it's not just to use it. It's not just to have it. You've got to use it, right? Maybe your area of personal growth is you're committing that every single morning you're going to jump onto MBS. You're going to listen to Barry. That is a non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable for me. So it should be for you. But where else do you want to grow? I do a lot of personal development work because we're in the relationship business. I do a lot of coaching with my clients around how to be relatable how to be able to provide value propositions to realtor partners. It's not enough to just be a great originator. You've got to be great at connection. You've got to be able to tap into people's hearts, not just from your head and your intellect, but from a place of value and care and be clear on what your personal strengths are. So where do you want to grow personally? What are you not great at that you need to get better at? Maybe it is reading a book, you know, once a month. Maybe it is signing up for some podcasts. And Megan just told me they're launching a new podcast, which I'm very excited about. But where do you want to grow? I educate 20 minutes every single day, no matter what. I was listening to, you know, podcasts while I was cooking Christmas dinner, right? Like it's fun to fuel yourself and get new ideas. So where do you want to grow this year personally? And then your personal finances, you know, everyone goes, ah, oh, I don't want to talk about it. But at the end of the day, we have to talk about it. Where do you need to make shifts regarding your personal finances? Maybe you are carrying secret debt. Maybe your spouse doesn't know you took out a new credit card, right? And you know, you've got to deal with that. Maybe you haven't saved any money. And that's why this season has been very difficult. Well, now you got to make a new choice. Start somewhere. You know, I started with one, making a decision, no more credit cards for discounts. It's not even an option anymore. This was years ago. Changed my life. No more discounts on credit cards, period. 
you know, I paid off one credit card, I cut it up. I paid off another credit card, I cut it up. And I switched to two credit cards, one business and one personal. And those are the only two cards I carry. It simplified my life in such a meaningful way. So I want a, I want a financial life that is simple and that I can control. And I got you got to pay yourself first. So if you're not paying yourself first, you need to get another account where that money gets automatically drawn out and put into an account that you can't touch. I'm not going to go through these, but if you don't know what your goals are, these are just some ideas that are part of the plan that we'll send you. So you can take a look at some ideas of some of the things that you may want to do um, to reach your goals. So this just gives you some examples and some ideas for every of the goal category in case you, you know, you aren't sure what you want your goals to be. We just want to give you some great suggestions. So with that, I'm going to unshare. Oh, there's so much to unpack there, Cindy. <laughs> I, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone on this call for being part of this chat box. I mean, it was so amazing to watch you guys be vulnerable and be honest about the areas that you're struggling with. And, and I know that that is hard. And so I just want everyone that's called to give yourself a pat on the back because you know what that does. And you know what you sharing in there did it made other people not feel alone. And when that happens, it creates this beautiful support system and this power so that you can finally move forward. And there's a few things as we wait for the chat and the questions to come in here, Cindy, that I just wanted to really highlight that you said. And one is, you know, you talk a lot about energy, the energy that we get from other people, the energy that we put out there and how that's going to attract our goals. And I feel like right now in the industry with things being a little bit hard and everyone's struggling a little bit right now, that the energy has been so low. And so I mean, it's easy to get to that point, uh, but it's really, really important that we stop that negative energy. And whenever you notice it coming up within yourself, I want you to just pause, stop, take a couple deep breaths and remember what these goals are that Cindy has you mapping out, that you're mapping out yourself. And I know we've gotten a lot of questions. You guys do not worry. Cindy's team is going to be sending out this PDF so that you guys can go through and do this 90 day goal setting exercise. So do not worry about that. Now, the other thing that I wanted to touch on is intention. Intention is so huge. And you know what intention kind of bubbles down to, I feel like, is clarity. And that's exactly what this program is going to give you. It's, it's going to give you clarity so that you can have that crystal clear intention to continue to follow through with all the goals that you're going to achieve this year. 100%. And, you know, it's the basis of my whole platform. When we created the name, The Defining Difference, that name came to me, which sounds a little woo-woo. I have no idea where it came from. I didn't choose that name. It chose me. But I went and searched for many years of what is the defining difference. And I mean, no joke, like it was a, it was a journey for me to really figure out what it was. And I came to a conclusion through a lot of soul searching. The defining difference is a choice. We all have the ability to make new and intentional choices. We can wake up tomorrow and make a conscious choice for what no longer serves us because it's the habits that we have every single day that create our existence. You know, we are the sum of the choices that we've made up until now. Sorry, but we are. And you have to take ownership of that. Yes, life circumstance get in the way. We can't control all the events of our life. But one of my favorite things that I train on is Jack Canfield's events E plus R equals O, which is events plus response equals outcome. And that was a principle when I trained with Jack in 2009 for a year. In fact, I met him at a mortgage conference. He was a mortgage speaker and I was very intrigued with his work. And I read his book, The Success Principles. And I embodied that principle of events plus response equals outcome, which has been big for this last year. We couldn't control the event of COVID. We couldn't control the event of interest rates rising. That's a, that's, it's an event out of our control, but we can, we have the ability con to control the response to it. And when my clients were calling me, Megan, and just complaining and calling their realtor partners and complaining and complaining and complaining, and it's so terrible. And I said, stop talking about, stop putting those words out into the universe. They're very powerful. 
What we talk about comes about. I believe it wholeheartedly. You know, so we've got to change our narrative and we have to do that using a stronger mindset. And that's where morning practices, look, it's not like, I, you know, I certainly have my days just like everybody else in this last year where it was tough. But for me, I'm trained well enough on practices that I know if I get myself and my own mindset is off, I've got to double down. I will do three meditations during the day, two in the morning, one at night. I will do my gratitude twice a day instead of once a day. I will up my exercise level. I go to sleep earlier. I mean, all the things. And if I put those components into play, you know, my life works significantly better. And within two or three days, I can get myself out of that mindset. But your point of notice what you're noticing. My coach says that a lot. Sounds kind of weird, right? But notice what you're noticing. What thoughts are going through your head? If they're negative loops going over and over and over, you need to change your own narrative. And that's a choice. Yes, it's it's simply about how can we reframe this. And I got to be honest with you, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people, interviewing a lot of people talking about, you know, these difficult times that we're in right now. And listen, it's all cyclical. We've been in difficult times prior. You know, you were talking about the housing crash back in 08 and what pain that caused. But you know what? When you talk to people that survived all of these lower points in the market, at the end of the day, when time comes back around, they say, I needed that to happen. You know why? Because I didn't have my system set up. I didn't have my process set up. And, and I wasn't as an effective leader had I not been put in that situation. And so while it might be very hard to see the positive right now, I encourage each and every one of you to truly just have faith because with time, all of these lessons become a lot more clear. 100% true. And that's why, you know, Barry talks about it a lot too, is you got to plant the seeds, you know, and for my clients that have been planting seeds this whole last year, they've not only done well, but they're going to have an incredible year ahead because as soon as this market shifts, they've already been in front of these referral partners. So it is time to just go, okay, it's time to put the blinders on, get focused. If you just focus on three or four key things, meaning your career work goals, if you just get laser focused is, all right, nothing is going to stand in my way anymore. You know, what's going to happen if I call my past clients? They're not going to hang up on you. They're your past clients. They actually want to talk to you. I have so many clients now going, I'm so shocked. They're so happy to hear from me. You know, so it's, it's an interesting time, but we got to put the blinders on guys. We've got to let fear drop to the back seat. It can't lead the show anymore. You got to look in the road ahead. I'm going to really challenge you to get an accountability partner, friend, family member, coworker, coach, whatever. I want you to get an accountability partner, stay on track, complete the plan and show up for yourself an hour a day to focus on income and relational activities. If you do that one thing, do five income generating activities a day, you will notice a difference in your business within two weeks. It shifts that fast because you're changing the energy. And I believe uh, Dana put in a link there. And Dana, if you want to go ahead and put it in there again as well, um, Cindy is kind enough to schedule a complimentary strategy call. So definitely recommend this after you get that 90-day program filled out or if you're struggling with something. Because the last thing we want, and let's all be honest, we've been there before, is that you have these goals for the next year. And then you know what? The next year rolls around and you have the same goals that you have not achieved. We do not want that. <laughs> accountability is huge. And that's how you reach that next step is having that accountability. So Cindy, thank you. You're so kind for offering that for people. And again, Dana will put that in, in the chat box there. You can go ahead and click that link. And Dana's, Cindy's team will be sending out uh, that PDF for that 90 day goal setting worksheet as well. So you will receive that. And for those asking about the recording, we will send that out as soon as we can as well. And with that, Cindy, I uh, I want to I want to thank you so much for your time, your encouragement, your words, and you just showing up and being vulnerable. I wish that we had more of that in the mortgage industry, and I I just appreciate you so much, and I look up to you so much, and I know everyone else does on this call. Look at all these thank yous, and uh, you're just such a gift to this world. You are. Thank you so much for having me. I am so passionate about helping originators and. You know, the link that Dana sent, we're happy to share. We've got a variety of different programs. If you're looking for support, it's, doesn't, it's not as an all-cost support, and we can meet you where you're at. 
but I didn't get to where I am without having support. And I really am passionate about, I think this has been a very tough season. And I think a lot of people need support to get out of their own head and to take those bold steps to move forward. Because I always say, you know, in coaching, you'll take, you know, you'll, you'll take bolder steps than you would take on your own. And that's kind of where the beauty comes. And I can honestly say, Megan, I still remember the first time I met you. And one of the things that you remember where we met, and one of the things is when we first met, the first thing I noticed about you, Megan, I think why we connected at such a deep level is your energy. You know, mm-hmm. you've got great energy. And so we got to be intentional when we're out in front of our referral partners, you all. And, and if you're talking about how bad the market is, are you depicting good energy for your referral partner? No. You need, if that, if that has been you this past year, change your own story. You've got to be talking about the fact that lower rates are ahead. We've got to be preparing. You've got to be educating your realtors about calling their past client database themselves, meeting with them quarterly to have a marketing meeting. I did it with all my top referral partners. I met with them quarterly. Call your top referral partners tomorrow and say, hey, let's get to de- together and talk about your You know, let's talk about quarterly marketing goals. Let's talk about what we're going to do together to market and build and grow our business. Just, it's about the conversation. You don't have to be a marketing expert. Do they have a database that they're actually using? What are they doing to market their business right now? What's working for them? What's not? We want to be able to have a conversation and provide value. And your referral partners need the positive version of you. So if you don't have morning practices, Get intentional about that. Do not put it off another day. You can start tonight or tomorrow morning. Change your habits. Yeah, upload, just up-level your daily practices, I promise, and stop the negative voice. We can't always turn it off in a day in our head, but we can turn it off for what's coming out of our mouth and start there. It'll really change the game. Amen. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you for doing it to be with you all. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you, Megan. You're amazing. Thank you. Bye everyone.